The man needs no introduction. Please, Mr. Wild Bill Bauer. Yeah. Thank you. I feel lucky tonight. I just found 35 cents in the urinal. <laughs> Pennies. <laughs> Drove in today, got lost about 10 times. Have you ever noticed when you're out of town and you get lost, the first thing that you do? You pull into a gas station and you ask the stupidest guy in town, where the hell you are? <laughs> Here's a guy struggling mentally not to revert to all fours, you know? He eats out of a dish with his name on it. <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> I had another bizarre Christmas this year. Went over to my girlfriend's relatives and hey, I'm not saying that they're weird people, but her mother had a pet cow. Guess that's not so unusual around here, eh? <laughs> Great big huge litter box, you know. <laughs> Nobody ever emptied it. <laughs> Something smells good. <laughs> Live on the country and a big huge dog chained up in the backyard, you know, big black dog. You ever notice people always give them such sweet names too? Satan, get away from there. <laughs> Satan, let him go. <laughs> Couldn't even tell what kind of dog it was because it had a hockey mask on. <laughs> Her Uncle Leo was there. Everyone's got an Uncle Leo. Uncle Leo's always the first one at the party. He's drinking something completely different from everyone else. So he doesn't have to share. <laughs> sure, he was drinking purple cows. It's milk and blackberry brandy. Want some? No thanks, Leo. <laughs> Then after he's had about 10 of those, he walks up and he goes, go ahead, hit me. <laughs> hit me as hard as you can. <laughs> no, Leo, no, I don't want to hit you. No, hit me. Hit me as hard as you can. I hit him, he threw up all over everything. <laughs> had a river of purple puke running through the living room. And then I'm the asshole. <laughs> he hit Leo. <laughs> Get Satan in here to clean up this puke! <laughs> Did you ever notice, too, that somebody always manages to die over the holidays? How oh, goddamn inconsiderate. You sure it was my grandfather that died? 92, left behind my grandmother, 88. She's already out screwing every guy in town. <laughs> Got herself an 800 number. <laughs> Big hassle at the funeral. Actually, the night before the funeral, I had to go over the mortuary with my grandmother just to make sure everything's okay. Right off the bat, my grandma's got a problem. They bring us downstairs where they keep all the bodies. She freaks out. I wanted him buried in a blue suit. You got him in a brown suit. I wanted him buried in a blue suit. Mortician goes, that's okay, ma'am. I'll take care of it right now. Ed, switch the heads on two and four. <laughs> Grandpa ended up looking like Howdy Doody. <laughs> Careful with that casket, the head's not on very good. <laughs> Went over a few days, tried to relax, unwind, take things easy, watch a little TV. I get up, I answer the door. It's two of those Jehovah Witness guys in the three piece suits. They rape me. <laughs> yeah, the one guy laid me over the sofa, the other guy witnessed it. <laughs> I got another drunk driving ticket. Oh, it got quiet in here. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. It always happens the same way. You're driving your buddy's car because he's too drunk to drive. <laughs> Baba, give me those keys. You're way too drunk. <laughs> Just trying to get from point A to point B. Police car sneaks up behind you and throws on the lights. I hate the ones that got the blue lights. I always feel like there's a Kmart behind me. <laughs> Bubba, wake up! 
then he hits the siren. Then your buddy always says the same thing. Wow, now we're fucked. <laughs> no, Bubba, I'm fucked. <laughs> you get to go home in a taxi. <laughs> Roll down my window, look at the police officer. Hey, you might as well just take me to jail. I'm drunk. There's a bag of pot in the glove box. And I'm about to commit a sex offense. See? <laughs> oink, 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 oink. <laughs> Mothers, have you ever known so much that you I can still remember my own mother was always, this house is so messy, you'd think pigs live here. <laughs> this isn't a room, it's a pig sty. Who left the toilet seat up? You'd think pigs live here, you'd think pigs live here. Hello, is this the Bauer residence? No, pigs live here. <laughs> And the dumb questions they asked, are you ready to act like a human being now? <laughs> Remember this one? You kids are getting away with murder around here. Mom, if you'll just shut up. <laughs> but dad meant business. I can still remember it was always, do I have to do all your thinking for you? What do you want me to say, dad? <laughs> I can still remember him strapping me into that chair and throwing on the electrical current. <laughs> You're grounded. <laughs> of course, my uncle Ernie gave me the best piece of advice I've ever had. He said, never forget that the main problem with having sex with animals is you bump into them a year later and they act like they don't even know you. <laughs> If you ever uh, check out the Dr. Demento show, Ooh, that's our show, it sure is. Thank you. Let's bring him up here, Mr. Tim Kavanaugh. Yeah. Well, you all seem to be in a good mood tonight. Yeah, Tim, we are. Back in your seats, everybody. I... I am in a particularly good mood myself because over the weekend, my sister had a baby. You know, a lot of people say, Tim, was it a boy, was it a girl? We were just happy it was a mammal, to tell you the truth. But now, this is my sister's fourth kid, and she likes to give her kids names directly from the pages of the Bible, you know, which I think is nice. She named this one Lepers, uh, which I think is a... New Testament name, if I'm not mistaken. Some of you biblical scholars up front are gonna be checking that out when you get home, huh? Oh, Tim, we brought Bibles with us. Always a good idea when you attend this kind of a show, I'll tell you. If any of you are like me, and probably a lot of you are saying to yourselves right about now, we're not. Uh, you've probably been watching that situation in England pretty carefully. I was over in London last December. I attended this big dinner for Prince Charles and Princess Diana, because I'm close friends of the two of them. In fact, after dinner, I stood up. I said, Di Chuck. That's how close we are. I call them by their nicknames, Di and Chuck. They call me by my nickname, Flemhead, so it works out kind of nice. I said, Di Chuck. I've written a little toast for the two of you. You know, they enjoyed it so much, I thought it'd be kind of nice tonight if we all raised a glass and joined in a toast to the royal couple. What do you say? Yeah, Tim, sounds like fun. You bet it does. Here we go. There's nothing but smiles on the whole British Isles for you. Diana and Chuck So let's raise a toast Oh, we wish you the most Happiness, health, and good luck 
so come on, drink up. Come on, drink up. Come on, drink up, Chuck and die. Raise your cup so get your bottoms up. Come on, drink up, Chuck and die. Come on, drink up, Chuck and die. Uh, just a little up, Chuck and die joke. No, no. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot, you guys. I think they deserve it, don't you? Yeah, Tim, we're sick and tired of those two. Oh, I don't blame you, my gosh. You know, before going into comedy, I was a high school teacher for a while. I know some of you with kids saying, ooh, kind of a scary concept there. But now teaching, teaching is a, I'll tell you, it's a very good profession, but can be really challenging. I'll never forget this one day in class, I thought things were going so well. All of a sudden, one of the girls got up, walked over to the window, and jumped out. <laughs> you know, which meant I had to make a whole new seating chart and everything. <laughs> that happens five or six times. You begin to wonder, what's the point anyway? But, you know, I almost got fired from that job. Oh, Tim, be honest, you did get fired from that job. <laughs> All right, you saw through me this one time, yeah. <laughs> I got in trouble, I told my kids it was all right to come to my class hungover. And the principal got furious as I explained to her, aren't we supposed to be preparing these kids for college? <laughs> well, she didn't buy it and I was out on my ear, I'll tell you. Now, I was, reading a, I was reading an interview with President Reagan a couple weeks ago, I'm sure he doesn't remember giving the interview, but it was... <laughs> It was very interesting. He said that when he finishes his presidency, he wants to resume his acting career. Yeah, and he asked the guy who wrote On Golden Pond to write a sequel that the president could star in. The guy's agreed to do it, but he's having trouble coming up with a title for it. You know, he's thinking On Golden Pond 2 or Golden Pond Revisited. Somebody suggested more on Golden Pond. <laughs> And the president got all upset. Well, you guys have been very nice. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys later on. Bye-bye, everybody. Please welcome Mr. Paul Dillery. Yeah. I'm a little tired tonight. Couldn't sleep last night. I'm right behind the Super America station, too. All night long, I hear, go ahead, four. <laughs> Tossed and turned all night. A friend of mine says to me, have trouble sleeping? He says, it could be your mattress. Try flipping it over. Sleep on the other side. I did that. That's awful in between there like that. <laughs> this morning, I fell asleep in the shower. My hand on the curtain rod, I thought I was on the bus. And I get off the bus, I step in this big puddle. There I am with my foot in the toilet. <laughs> you know, I bought an alarm clock that when it wakes me up, I press the button on top, 10 minutes later, it wakes me up again. And I press the button on top, 10 minutes later, it rings, it wakes me up again. And I press the button on top, and it does that all night. <laughs> my brother-in-law sold me that thing. He's one of these guys always selling stuff out of the back of a van. Yeah, and it's not his van. He knows how it feels to be taken, though. He married my sister. But I can say that you don't know her. Well, she used to wake me up late at night, tell me it was time for school. Did that every night, drove me nuts. Of course, it was always a relief to find out it wasn't time for school, you know. But then I had to walk back home. She called up the other day, wanted me to go take care of her kids again. I don't mind watching her kids, if they're behind thick glass. <laughs> it's just I'm always afraid somebody's gonna get hurt and start crying. I hate that, when I get hurt and start crying. <laughs> but I was strict with those kids. I was the boss boy. <laughs> I made them put out every fire they started. You know, I applied for a job on a construction crew once. A lot of big burly guys there. 
The foreman said, you can have the job, just fill this out. And he handed me a shirt. <laughs> but I've had jobs. I'll never forget the time they gave me a farewell party at work. I was so surprised. I didn't even know I was fired. <laughs> it was a wild party, though. Things got out of hand, you know. Finally, that whole photo mat just tipped over. <laughs> then I got a job at a jazz and blues nightclub. Four dollars an hour to stand in the back at the bar and go, yes, yes. <laughs> Sing it out. Man, oh man, she done you wrong. Jackson. Isn't this show business great? Boy, oh boy, the big bookings, the big money. Groupies. <laughs> Girls hiding in my closet. After a while, though, you know, you just get tired wishing for those things. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Please welcome Miss Liz Winstead. Now, thank you all for coming. This is really a great cause. You gave your money, and I, it's really important now, especially to, to practice safe sex. I know I am. I'm, I'm wearing a condom right now. <laughs> oh. No, I'm not. I really, I don't have a penis. <laughs> I lost it in the war. <laughs> Kick it out with a dick joke. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the Comedy Gallery. This is great. I am so glad to be here. Now, they don't allow you to smoke in this room. Uh, how many non-smokers are in here? You like that? You think that's a good thing? Yeah. Sure, applaud yourselves, you self-righteous people. Because <laughs> I still smoke. I think this is unfair. You know, if you're going to separate in smoking preferences. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, I think it sucks. If you're going to separate in preferences, I think you should go the whole nine yards with it. You know, smoking, religious, sexual, what the hell? <laughs> It'd be great. It'd be like, yeah, table of six, non-smoking Jewish lesbians, right this way. <laughs> and God, the media is trying to get you to quit, aren't they? They're bringing Yule Brynner back from the dead to tell you to quit smoking. Have you seen these commercials? Don't smoke. I am dead. Don't smoke. Never smoke. <laughs> it is just too weird. And you know, it's not gonna stop there. You know, you know that they have all the dead guys making commercials, you know. Liberace's got one. Say no to crack. Have you heard? <laughs> there you have it. Because I think the Beatles were the greatest rock band ever. I think I always will. Don't you think? Yeah. And the day John Lennon was killed was the most emotional day of my life. I'll never forget it. I, I was listening I, to Howard Cosell tell me. So, you know, right away it was a moving thing. And, uh, <laughs> you know, not a way to find out. And I was living with my mom at the time. And I found out. I put on the white album. I was in my room. And that's the point where your mom can really ruin a moment because she doesn't have a fucking clue. OK. <laughs> so I'm up in my room. And she bursts on the door and announces to me, I just heard on the television they shot Jack Lemmon. <laughs> Oh my God, because that's how parents are. They watch the news for like two and a half to three minutes a day and they're experts on everything, right? They know everything. I mean, when Ron and Nancy were on TV speaking out against drugs, my mom called me up immediately. You know, Liz, say no to crack. <laughs> Just say no to crack. Your father and I, we know about the crack. <laughs> well, then tell me. Like, do you know what it is? Have you seen it? It's microwavable cocaine. I don't know, it's a yuppie thing, I guess. I don't know. You have to wear Reeboks to do it. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. Mr. Joe Minjaras. Yeah. Hi, guys. I started one of these new diets, you know. Now, why in the hell is it every diet you go on, you got to drink so much water? What is it, like eight, nine glasses of water? Yeah, I'm losing weight now, but I started peeing in bed, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, it's embarrassing. The whole neighborhood knows I'm on a diet. Look, Mary Jo's on a diet. He's got his sheets hanging out again. <laughs> I always seem to start the diet the same time my wife does, right? You women can come up with some excuses not to go on the diets, man. My wife says stuff like, 
well, honey, um, uh, I'm going to eat this last gallon of haagen <laughs> Well, I got to get it out of my system. <laughs> See, guys, we use the holidays for our excuse, don't we? Yeah, well, I'm going to drink this last case of beer with uh, Arbor Day just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and all these damn diets you're not supposed to eat after, after 8 o'clock at night. Damn it, that's when I get hungry. I'm Mexican. You'd think I would crave tacos or something, right? I crave Oriental food at night. Yeah, I do. I love that shit, man. And there's a rule of thumb, too. If you want good Oriental food, eat where the Orientals eat. That's why I always eat at the White Castle. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, right. There's so many Orientals there, you think you're in a Bruce Lee movie, for Christ's sake. <laughs> same people are there every night, right? You walk in the door, they're in the corners, that same lesbian birthday group, arm wrestling for party favors. <laughs> and you can set your watch to the place, right? Because right around, around 1.30, you know the bars are closed because you always see this guy. Yeah, um... Uh, give me a... Uh, shut up, wait. Um... Wait a minute, man. Yeah, give me, give me 150 White Castles <laughs> and one Diet Coke, please. <laughs> what does this shit come to, about a buck and a half? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't understand this, man. We get the cheapest food in the world here and we got people starving. Now, you see this stuff on TV about these hungry third world countries? There's a simple answer for it. Open a couple White Castles in Ethiopia. <laughs> Well, sure, you could feed the whole damn country for, what, 50 bucks? <laughs> well, who in the hell's gonna come back for seconds, huh? <laughs> of course, down the street from the White Castle is McDonald's. You know where that is, by the freeway? I hate that goddamn place. Who hires their help there? You always got some 14-year-old kid behind the counter with a smart answer for me. Like I was there the other night, I said, hey, man, what's that on my Big Mac? He said, man, that's a McFly. <laughs> Pissed me off, he was scratching his McNuggets. <laughs> I gotta go, my name is Joe Manjaris, thanks a lot. In 1985 and 1986, our next act uh, was voted Minnesota's favorite comic. Please welcome Mr. Scott Hansen. Yeah. Shut up. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? It's a lot better. What's the matter? Too good for us? Loosen up a little bit, huh? Shopping at cars today? Anybody buy a new car lately? Really? No? I don't know. Think American cars are any good now? They're trying to make us think they're a lot better, don't you think so? Yeah, Ford's got that great new slogan. Quality is job one. Are they forgetting about the shit cars they used to make? <laughs> I mean, like the Pintos and Granadas. <laughs> yeah, I think apology should be job one. <laughs> and remember the Pinto commercials? Ah, where are the Crenshaws? We're a seven Pinto family. <laughs> yeah, they don't tell you that. It used to be a 12 Pinto family. <laughs> and the Granada's a guy come out in a three-piece Pierre Cardin suit, stand in front of a 40-bedroom brick mansion and go, <laughs> I can't tell the difference <laughs> between my Granada and my Mercedes. <laughs> Ooh, here's a bright guy, huh? <laughs> All I can say is this guy must be fun for his buddies at parties, huh? <laughs> Hey, Bill, come here. <laughs> Can you tell the difference between this Russian caviar and kitty litter? <laughs> Is there some kind of contest on us that you can have the shittiest commercials on TV in this town or something? Like these Boschewitz guys? What the hell's wrong with these clowns? I mean, are they having a seizure or something? What's with their arms? They're in a hardware store. Nail their arms down for these things, right? right. You bet you can. You bet you, Jerry. <laughs> What the hell happened here? I feel like a big weeble or something. <laughs> you know, they remind me of that old robot from Lost in Space. Remember him? Danger, danger, fly with Brazil, fly with Brazil. 
I think we ought to take both of these guys and lock them in a Chevette with that asshole from Viking Chevrolet. <laughs> And what always follows him? The guy from Bradley Exterminating, right? <laughs> the man with no eyelids. He doesn't blink during the entire commercial. The whole thing is, hi. Is your house bothered by pests? <laughs> Click, not anymore, asshole. <laughs> and everybody's advertising on TV now. The Army even advertises on TV. The Army has an ad that goes, we do more before nine o'clock in the morning than most people do all day. Ooh, that's gonna get the 19-year-olds lining up, huh? <laughs> you have trouble with our army now? You think our army's tough at all? I think we are. We don't have that good of a record, you know? Vietnam, we didn't do that well, right? Korea, we didn't do that well, you know? In our own civil war, we only have one. <laughs> you know? And how can we not win the Revolutionary War? Who are we fighting? The Redcoats. Come on, it's like having a war during deer hunting season. <laughs> I mean, hadn't the British heard about camouflage? Come on, put on a green tie or something at least. You know, whenever they'd march into battle, what was in front of them all the time? A band. A goddamn band. I mean, how did they recruit these idiots, you know? Oh, you're a conscientious objector, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, you're just in the band then. <laughs> I don't know. Any married couples here? You like being married? Really? A lot? It's the best part. <laughs> you learn a lot about women after you get married, don't you? And you know what I found out after I got married? <laughs> I found out that women fart. <laughs> no, it's true, really, they do. <laughs> no, look at them all, look at me like, we do not, Scott. <laughs> oh, you ladies can call it fluff or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but it's farting, goddammit. <laughs> what are women saving this stuff up for, guys, you know? They say water weight buildup bullshit. That's gas. <laughs> yeah. This didn't happen once the whole time I dated my wife. No. All of a sudden the wedding night comes along, I come into the bedroom, the sheets are rippling on the bed. <laughs> my dog locked itself in the closet. <laughs> and the smoke detectors went off in our house. You see, I don't understand this, ladies, because with men, farting is like a greeting, right? <laughs> Two guys meet on the street, they could be nuclear physicists. It doesn't matter, right? It's, hi, Bill, how you doing? <laughs> oh, pretty good, Fred, pull this. Well, Jeff, got you again. <laughs> Walk again, he's coming over. <laughs> mm. And it's gone so far that men have laws about farting. There's a law that if you get more than four men in a car at one time, one has to fart. It's the law. Yeah, the designated farter, yeah. You know, at least I'm nice about it. I'll wait till we drive by a farm or something, you know? Uh, hey, did you cut the cheese? <laughs> oh, there's pigs out there. <laughs> Whew, must be two, three thousand of them, huh? Well, I guess they're behind that tree right now. And I found out from driving around, you can fart all the way through Iowa and nobody knows. Looks out great. <laughs> dating, dating is tough too. It's tough meeting people nowadays, isn't it? He's got these dating services on TV. They always make you feel so desperate on the commercials though, don't they? And they always come out, single, widowed, divorced, or just a fucking loser. <laughs> and then they always go on to say, make up to two new friends every month. <laughs> Boy, I mean, what are you gonna do with a backload of buddies like that, huh? I mean, two months down the line, I can't even talk to you, Marge. I know three other people now. <laughs> another thing I learned, I learned I shouldn't handle money. Who handles the money for you too? She does, good move. Because the number one thing you fight about is money, right? Guys can't handle their own money, I have trouble. Do you ever have trouble with your bank at all, ma'am? No, you see, maybe you can help me out then. Why is it when I write a check, all right, and I don't have any money in my account, my bank sends me a letter saying, hey, we're taking $10 more. <laughs> Take all you want. <laughs> well, here, I'll write you a check for it. What do you need? <laughs> 30, 40, come on, come on. <laughs> hey, here's an extra 10 in case I do it again, all right? <laughs> I thank you very much. You've been a great crowd. Thanks for coming down. Good night.
Mr. Charlie Walker. Yeah. You, how you doing? All right. Looking good. Yes, sir. Feeling pretty good? Got a good life going for me? How many people are, I'm gonna ask a quick question, I talk about television, but how many people have VCRs? VCR people out there? A couple of people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a few people for this kind of a group. Most people go, nah, it's a black man on stage. He might be at my house on the night looking in the room and shit like that. You know. Yeah. VCRs are nice to have, right? Especially for the weekend, because people pick up video movies for the weekend. I used to work at a video store. It was always funny because people would always ask for the popular movies that was out, like, you know, Top Gun, things like that. But when they wanted adult movies, they never really asked for them. They kind of like come up there and get you and take you over there and point it out to you like they can't read and you can't read it. Man. <laughs> I want that movie right there. But you want this movie right there? I want that movie right there, you know. And I was the asshole about this most time. I always shout out the title just for the hell of it, you know. Like, oh, you want this movie here? Butt bondage, here you go, sir. <laughs> Well, how do you get a movie like that with a straight face anyway? Yes, I like that movie, Butt Bondage, thank you very much. You, know. <laughs> you gotta think about that for a while, don't you? Yeah. But you know, women, you're right. Adult movies make women look bad. Adult movies make men look bad when we think about it. I seen one with, with a black guy in it one night. He said, I do believe I be coming now. <laughs> now that's something I say every time I make love. I do believe I be coming now. Oh, Sapphire. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is about adult movies? They specialize. Men know this too. They specialize because some men like, like women with big breasts. Some men like women with nice legs. Some men went like, I like women with feet. <laughs> they ain't got no feet. You gotta drag their ass all over town and shit like that, you know. And they got some for women too. They got this guy. I'm not gonna ask anybody if you ever seen this guy, but his name is Long Don Silver. <laughs> the man is 18 and a half inches long. Now the first thing a guy's gonna do when he sit there with a woman is going, hey, he can't get that thing fully erect, it'll kill him. <laughs> the blood will rush out of his body and he'll just drop over dead. <laughs> Else his body will shrink and he'll be going, help me, help me, help me. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta go. Thank you very much. My name is Charlie. Please welcome Mr. Bruce Murray. Yeah. You guys are nice. So you guys are partying here. We're having a good time here. Drinking wine coolers. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> You know what they got now? MD 2020 wine coolers. <laughs> yeah, you see them? Mad Dog wine coolers. <laughs> Who the hell are these for? Yuppie bums? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know this? I would. Damn. Hey, I don't drink anymore. I hope you guys are drinking having a good time. I can't drink anymore because drinking's like kryptonite to us Indians. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I stopped drinking. All my buddies said, well, that's great, Chief. Why don't you do like we do? Just get high on the natural stuff. <laughs> Just smoke pot. Not going out on the limb. One of the reasons why I'm controversial, I like to raise the law of hell whenever I can. I think pot ought to be legalized. Oh, sure, stud. I know what you're saying there. You're saying, Chief, you legalize pot, that's no good. You're going to have more people into crime. They're going to be out robbing people. Oh, give me a break. If pot people were going to go out and rob something, it'd be something like a bakery store, wouldn't it? <laughs> Cream pops in a bag. <laughs> Get those jelly rolls out of there. <laughs> of course, the very first time I heard this, I didn't quite understand it, except I thought that was pretty good. Acid rain? Hey, I thought it was a dream come true. <laughs> I like you guys. You guys are hip. I, you guys are all right. So I want to come clean with you, OK? I never ate a dog, OK? Okay, one dog, big deal. <laughs> oh, simmer down, I'll tell you what happened. What really happened was the Hmong family down the hall <laughs> invited me over for a barbecue, told me it was chicken, four legs, what a fool I felt like. <laughs> I'm making fun of stereotypes, people always jump to the wrong conclusion. Let me give you an example. 
Let's say you enjoy a fine wine. Let's assume that wine would be a Chateau Rothschild 57, okay? Full body, delicate bouquet. <laughs> now let's assume you like to drink it out of a brown paper bag, okay? <laughs> right away you think, Indian from Edina, right? <laughs> well, you guys are a real kick in the ass here, and uh, yeah, I'd like to hang out with you, but I can't. I have to go play bingo tonight, so. Uh, <laughs> I've had some fun, I hope you had too, thank you. Please, Mr. Mike Gandolfi, yeah. Thank you, please stop. I took a cab over here to the show. I had the driver drive in reverse. When I got here, he owed me $7. <laughs> I remember when my sister and I were little, we used to fight, and I couldn't hit her back, so I'd get back at her by exchanging the labels on her cream rinse and nair bottles. <laughs> She'd come out of the bathroom crying, and I'd say, why the long forehead? My grandmother's going deaf. You know they say if you lose one of your senses, the other ones become keener. Well, we didn't want her to go deaf, so we poked her eyes out. <laughs> My sister drank too much low-fat milk, and now she has flabby feet and ankles. <laughs> My sister just got married not too long ago. They wanted their wedding videotaped, but they couldn't afford it, so they got married at a bank. They have cameras there. I bet my brother a $50 bill that he couldn't stare at the sun for 20 minutes. And he did, but I only gave him a dollar. And his hearing's a lot better now too. I went out with this woman who was so fat, when she mooned, the tides changed. <laughs> anyway, I've been to college. Um, I thought I'd make some friends, so I joined the Oedipus Club. We had these big parties on Mother's Day. It was really a good time. And I, oh, I never made it to my, uh, in my class on obsessive compulsiveness because I was washing my hands that hour. I guess there's a, a drug now for obsessive compulsiveness. The only problem is you have to take one every five minutes. <laughs> so, thanks. This has been the best night of my entire life. We are thrilled to have him this evening, Mr. Jeff Gerbino. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sparky. Thank you. One of Jerry's kids working hard for you? What do you think, huh? <laughs> we've got the weirdest talk show hosts, the weirdest celebrities in this country. Look, we've got someone like Dr. Ruth Westheimer. He's a celebrity, a millionaire. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? That Nazi troll. <laughs> <laughs> this Muppet gone bad. <laughs> What have we come to in this country, folks? We got a midget telling us how to fuck. Do you realize this? What the hell would she know about it? About that big, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> that head position could be advantageous, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I could put a six back on top of there, couldn't I? <laughs> what the hell would her sex life be like, for God's sakes? You know, she'd have to go up on a regular size guy. <laughs> This lady, my God, she's married twice, Dr. Ruth. I love that thought, huh? Can you picture her? You know, if wore that first husband down to the nub, huh? <laughs> How could you picture Dr. Ruth Westheimer's husband? The man must be like a human test pig, you know? <laughs> Guy comes home and I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> Oh, God, I don't have any fluid left in my body. <laughs> She's sitting there in a Nazi suit and a bullwhip going, Yeah, yeah, tonight! Yeah! 
gonna strap you to the wheel of fortune. <laughs> then I spin you around. <laughs> and he's going, no, honey, no. <laughs> Can't I just buy a vowel? <laughs> I just don't trust anybody dishing out sex advice with a German accent. It just doesn't sound right. Can you see her walking around with the heels, you know? We have ways of making you come. <laughs> <laughs> You'll come once and then again and then again. God, this woman's got the same answer for every sex problem. Have you ever noticed that? It always winds up being the same answer, you know? It's like, well, I think you should learn to stroke some penis! <laughs> stroke some penis! <laughs> it's like a Libyan battle cry. Holy war! Stroke some penis! Hey, pal, there's a blast of new information, huh? Stroke the penis, whoo, thanks a lot, Dr. Ruth. I never would have cooked that one up on my own. I can't wait to go home and try that one out. Well, you saved my marriage. <laughs> yes, and she says the weirdest shit, nobody flinches. Comedians can't go on David Letterman and talk the trash she does. She'd make a trucker blush with some of this thing. Everybody goes, well, she knows what you're talking about. Ah, oh, she does. She says, well, I think it's very, very important that men and women make friends with their penis and their vagina. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Fuck up, you little troll. I... <laughs> These people call up her show. They're right out of Twinkie Land, don't you think? <laughs> You have those people, hey, Dr. Ruth, <laughs> Bill Bauer here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a little trouble with my girlfriend. <laughs> Every time we have sex for some crazy reason, I really don't know why, but uh, she will light her pubic hair on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and what does she say? Well, I think that's perfectly normal. <laughs> What the fuck it is? <laughs> what the hell's that normal for? <laughs> they call her up, these people, right out of the blue. They, they, she, she knows what she's talking about. Hello, hey, say, Dr. Ruth, it's Gomer, she's I am. <laughs> <laughs> say, I wanna know something. If I'm having sex with, like, Sergeant Carter, am I gay? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfectly normal fantasy. Oh, fuck you, it is. Let's see a few shocked faces here. We're talking about masturbation. Look at, look at you over here. Yeah, like you, don't, <laughs> like you don't stroke the baloney pony, pal. Come on. Come on. Not just Jeff up here with the zipper clown. Come on. You take a shower and you come out. What's the cleanest part of your body? Come on. <laughs> look at you laughing at him like you're better over here. Mr. Honolulu shirt. Yeah. I'd like to see you when you were 13 looking at that TV going, ooh, Marsha Brady. Ooh, Marsha Brady. <laughs> I'm out of here. Good night, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>